Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are fine. So today's topic is osmosis. Uh, osmosis is the flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane from a solution with a low solute concentration to a solution with high solute concentration. So what does it mean? There is an example here in BRS Physiology about two solutions. So for osmosis to occur, there has to be a semi-permeable membrane between the two solutions. Now, solution 1, it contains a solute that is too large to cross the membrane. And because of this solute, um, there is an osmotic pressure that develops in this solution. Solution 1. Okay, and solution 2 is pure water. So the presence of solute in solution 1, it produces an osmotic pressure. So uh, now there is an osmotic pressure difference that develops across the membrane because solution 1, uh, it has solute, but solution 2, it is only pure water. So the water will flow from, a solu uh, from solution 2 because solution 2 has no solute and has a lower osmotic pressure. So water will always fr flow from a lower osmotic pressure to a solution with a higher osmotic pressure. So now the water flows from solution 2, which has no solute and lower osmotic pressure, to solution 1, which has solute and has the higher osmotic pressure. So now you understand the definition that uh, osmosis is the flow of water across a semi-permeable membrane from a solution with low solute concentration or lower osmotic pressure. Okay, now here is another concept uh, of osmolarity. So what is osmolarity? It is the concentration of osmotically active particles in a solution. And how we can calculate it? And there is a formula. So osmolarity is equal to um, G into C, where G is the number of particles of that solute in a solution. And C is the concentration. Uh, that is mole per liter. And so for example, uh, if we have sodium chloride, so... Uh, the number of particles of sodium chloride there are two and uh, let's say we have uh, the concentration of sodium chloride that is one mole per liter so we multiply these two and we get the osmolarity and depending upon the osmolarity uh, we classify solutions into three types so one is uh, isoosmotic if the two solutions they have the same osmolarity then we call uh, then we call it isoosmotic but if, to, uh, if the two solutions, they have different calculated osmolarity, then the solution with, uh, which has the higher osmolarity, it is hyperosmotic. And the solution with lower osmolarity is hypoosmotic. Okay, so on the next page, we have uh, the Van Hoff's law for calculating the osmotic pressure. Uh, it simply states that the osmotic pressure depends upon the concentration of osmotically active particles. So this means that the osmotic pressure increases when the solute concentration increases or uh, when there is increase in the osmotically active particles in the solution. So here is the example that a solution of 1 molar calcium chloride has a higher osmotic pressure than does a solution of 1 molar potassium chloride because for a given volume the number of osmotically active particles is higher uh, in calcium chloride. So calcium chloride has a higher osmotic pressure because it has more number of osmotically active particles. So there is a direct relation between osmotic pressure of a solution and the number of osmotically active particles in it. So the next thing here is that uh, the higher the osmotic pressure of a solution, the greater the water flow into it. Uh, remember the definition of osmosis that uh, the water will flow from a solution with low osmotic pressure to a solution with a higher osmotic pressure. So now we have two solutions that have the same effective osmotic pressure and we call them as isotonic. Uh, no water flows across semi permeable membranes separating them because water will only flow whenever there is a difference between osmotic pressure. Uh, so in isotonic condition, no water flows across the semi-permeable membrane. But if we have two solutions separated by a semi-permeable membrane and have different effective osmotic pressures, so now uh, the water will flow from one solution to the other. Um, how? That the solution with the higher effective osmotic pressure, it is hypertonic. And the solution with lower effective osmotic pressure is hypotonic. So water flows from the hypotonic to the hypertonic solution. 
uh, same as uh, we have seen in the definition of osmosis okay next we have the reflection coefficient and uh, it is uh, a number between 0 and 1 and what it describes it describes the ease with which a solute permeates a membrane so um, it is a number between 0 and 1 so if the reflection coefficient is 1 we say that the solute is impermeable uh, for example we have albumin and it is a large solute it cannot uh, cross through the membrane so the solute is impermeable and when a solute is impermeable the reflection coefficient is one so if the solute is impermeable it is retained in the original solution and the presence of the solute will exert an osmotic pressure and it causes the water to flow and if the reflection coefficient is zero opposite to uh, that we have discussed if the reflection coefficient is zero the solute is completely permeable okay if the reflection coefficient is one the solute is impermeable but if the reflection coefficient is zero the solute is completely permeable now um, if it is permeable then uh, it will move from one solution to the other and now it will not exert any osmotic effect example of it is a urea a small solute usually it has a reflection coefficient uh, close to zero therefore it is an ineffective osmol so albumin is an effective osmol but urea because it is completely permeable it will not affect uh, it will not exert any osmotic effect so uh, we call it as ineffective osmol and the last thing we have on this page is the uh, effective osmotic pressure uh, you can easily tell it from the reflection coefficient because uh, if the reflection coefficient is 1 uh, as in the case of albumin uh, it is impermeable so it will exert the maximal effective osmotic pressure because albumin is an effective osmol but if the reflection coefficient is 0 uh, the solute will exert no, no osmotic pressure so it will not have any effective osmotic pressure just as in the case of urea Okay guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.